Maya, can you remember and can you tell us a little about what it was like the first night your family had to spend the night in their car? Um, the first night was definitely probably the toughest. Um, it was all new to me. I didn't know why it was happening or what we was going to do, but we was just we just had each other in the in the car, just just us. And how much better are things now? Oh, things are a lot better. Uh, we got a, a nice apartment. Um, not much furniture, but it, it's a home. You know, I can go somewhere, lay my head down, peaceful, not worried about anything happening. And I have to mention, you are the homecoming king of your <laughs> high school, and things really have turned around. But, you know, Isaiah, people can be judgmental. They'll look at a family who's lost their home. They'll think that family is fractured. They'll think that there were drugs and alcohol involved. But that wasn't the case in your family. No, not at all. Um, my parents, my, people, my coaches around me, people around me always kept me away from that. And... I, would, I remained focused. I didn't really hang out with anybody else other than if they're not playing basketball or trying to get done in school. I wasn't really hanging with them. I was just, I just kept my head straight. And John, you found that with a lot of the teenagers profiled in this piece. It, it wasn't, you know, a fractured family. It was mostly people who fallen on hard times or young people who had lost a parent. Yeah, I mean, we, we talk about homelessness and I think there's a lot of misperception. I mean, homelessness defined by Department of Education is lacking a, a permanent fix to dress at night. And that could mean just going from relative to relative or from home to home, from a, a group home. And what we found was that there, there's no profile. It cuts across no racial grounds, no geographic grounds. The recession, obviously, a huge role in this. And there are a lot of families. But this is more than 1 million kids and more than 100,000 athletes. And what we found, every case is different. But a lot of cases like Isaiah's where a family's in a precarious situation, and in, in this case, you know, your, your dad had a health issue, and there's nothing sort of cataclysmic, and there's no substance abuse. In Isaiah's case, the family stayed together, but it's just sort of one event can, can really sort of topple a, a family for at least temporarily. Isaiah, what's the toughest part about being a teenager and also being homeless? Uh, toughest part is definitely like your peers, you worry about them seeing you like this, uh, probably making fun of you and just talking about you because things go around high school pretty fast just by word of mouth. Yeah. Your coach, Matt Lochte, I spoke with him. <laughs> he said that you are such a tremendous leader for his team. Do you find that this experience has maybe made you see the world a little bit differently than your peers? Definitely. Um, on the basketball court, I help lead by they really want to play this sport. They got to be focused and really want to play. And in the classroom, in order to get anywhere, you have to have good grades. And I lead, help lead by example, just by getting good grades and telling them they need to get things straight. Yeah, and you are on track now to go to college. You've gotten Division yeah. One offers to go play basketball. What are you hoping yeah. to accomplish once you get on campus? Uh, well, I'm gonna work on being a physician assistant, like um, being doing something in the medical field. Um, just like my mother, uh, my mother really wants me to do that and I'm kind of interested in doing that.